Well, welcome back tonight. We've got a nice topic on integration of natural logs. So before we get our hands dirty with integrating natural logs, let's go back in time here and talk about the derivative of natural logs. All right, we had two main ideas. The first one, and let's get this in our notebook, nice little review here, the derivative of the ln of x, all right, we said is simply 1 over x. And that's probably one we should have, you know, memorized. We've used it enough by now. But then we have this general rule, okay, and that's our important number two here. If I said take the derivative of, instead of saying x, the ln of u, where u, of course, could be any function, 2x plus 10, x squared minus 5x. This time we're saying du over u. Okay, we would quickly take its derivative, put it over itself. So let's take example one now. I uh, will take the derivative of the ln of the absolute value of x squared plus 6x. Okay, now let's real quickly talk about that absolute value. It's not there to scare you, so don't worry about that part. It's there to remind you that if you look at the ln graph, okay, we had a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, and the ln graph grows very, very slowly. Now remember, these x values are always positive, and that's why this absolute value is there, to remind you that whatever you take the ln of, it must be of a positive number. Now again, this x doesn't have to be positive, but this quantity has to be positive, and that's all the absolute ver value there is to indicate. So let's go ahead and take this one, uh, hopefully, pretty easily. Um, the second I see ln, in my head I'm saying, okay, I need du over u. The u should be very obvious. We've done a ton of u sub by now. What is inside something? Well, clearly this junk is inside the absolute value. Okay, so x squared plus 6x, that's who I'm taking the ln of. Go get my du. I get 2x plus 6. And now the rule simply says, write the du over the u. So I've got 2x plus 6 all over x squared plus 6x. Okay, and that's simple. We were pretty good at taking those derivatives. All right, so let's dive into the integral section now. Now remember, integral, another way to say that is the antiderivative. Okay, we're going backwards against the derivative. All right, just like we took the derivative, we had two main examples. I'm going to show you two key examples for integrating. The first one is if you saw 1 over x. Okay, now remember, when we integrate, we should be thinking backwards. What you say to yourself is, Whose derivative am I staring at? Whose derivative is that? Well, I know that's the derivative of the ln of x plus c. Okay, so the integral of 1 over x equals the ln of x plus c. Now, all the multiple choices are going to go back and put that absolute value in there. And again, that's just saying that this absolute value graph, okay, all the x values have to be greater than 0. Now, let me talk about this again. If I were to try to rewrite this, okay, 1 over x, we could really say, is x to the negative 1 dx. And here's how you know you have an ln. It's a dead giveaway. Watch what happens when we actually try to integrate. Okay, if you add 1, what do you get? You get x to the 0, and then you have to divide by 0. Are you allowed to divide by 0? No, of course not. So this is the dead giveaway, okay, that you need to use an ln. And that should be one of the easy things we talk about. If you have to have 0 over 0, x to the 0 over 0, that is the dead giveaway that we should be doing in ln. All right, now let's go ahead and make the general rule. Okay, like for derivatives, we said du over u. Let's make a general rule for all ln graphs or ln integrals. If I have du over u in my integral, okay, oops, I don't need my du there, it's already there. I'm going to say this is equal to the ln of u plus c. And, of course, absolute value of u plus c. All right. I think we're ready to get our hands dirty and dive in here. All right. Example one for this section. Let's say the integral of 2 over x dx. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I say, do I have a constant I can pull out? Well, of course I do. I can pull out this 2. Now, notice the 2 is on top. So when I pull that out, the x is on the bottom, so I'm left with 1 over x. Okay. And now I say to myself, Am I staring at somebody's derivative, or do I have to do, you know, extra calculus? Well, no, that is somebody's derivative. That's the derivative of the ln of x. So this is equal to 2 ln of the absolute value of x plus c. Okay, now again, let's say you didn't catch that. Okay, you rewrite it as x to the negative 1, and you figure when you add 1 and divide by 0, it doesn't work. So there's your hint, you need that ln. Question 2. Let's do the integral of 1 over... 4x minus 1 dx. All right, so the first thing I say to myself, again, is that somebody's derivative I know? Okay, if not, I need u sub. And again, that's going to be like 99% of our problems are u sub problems. 
All right, do I have a constant I can pull out? Well, pulling out a one isn't gonna do anything, so no, I don't have a constant. All right, so I need to pick myself a u. And let's make a note in our book here that if we have a fraction and we don't have an obvious u, we're gonna say pick the denominator. All right, so let's star that in our notebook there. If we don't have an obvious u, like an exponent or somebody inside something, pick the denominator. All right, so my u is 4x minus 1. Therefore, my du is equal to 4dx. So I get du over 4 equals dx. All right, so let's go ahead and rewrite this puppy. I've got the integral of 1 over u, that's all this junk, times du over 4. All right, so I just, of course, replaced that in there. All right, do you have a constant you can pull out? Now it's just simple integra integration. I can pull out the fours on the bottom, so it's a one-fourth, the integral of, notice you have, du over u. One times du is du over u. So that's got to jump out the page at you, that that's the derivative of an ln. So I get one-fourth, the ln of u plus c. Now let's talk about this again. This is called an indefinite integral because there are no bounds. And every time you have an indefinite integral, you also have that plus c. And when I have the plus c, I'm actually going to go back and substitute whatever my u was. So I believe it was 4x minus 1 plus c. And there's my final answer. Piece of cake. All right, let's throw another one out there. Number three, the integral of x plus 1 divided by x squared plus 2x dx. All right, so again, I'm asking myself, do I know whose derivative this is? And I have no clue, hopefully you don't either. So that's again telling me I need use of. Now we just made a note in our previous section, we said if you have a fraction, again, pick the denominator. That's where I would start. It's not always gonna work, but it usually works. If it failed, I would then probably pick the numerator. That would be my only other choice. All right, so let's say our u is x squared plus two x, therefore our du, is 2x plus 2 times dx. Now, all right, let's solve for that dx. I clearly, I get du over 2x plus 2. Whoops, 2x plus 2 equals dx. Sorry about that. So is anybody a little, you know, upset that that doesn't look like it's going to cancel with anything? Let's plug it in anyway, because that's all we've got at the moment. So I've got x plus 1 all over, we called that junk u. And in place of my dx, I'm putting du over 2x plus 2. All right, you might be thinking, hold up, we got a little bear trap here. What's going on? These terms clearly aren't canceling. But if you're, if you're quick, you'll notice something. Have you pulled it out already? Have you paid attention? You could easily rewrite that as 2 times x plus 1. All right, so look at a little sneaky every now and then. You might have to factor a little bit. Now these are clearly going to cancel. This 2 is in the denominator, so I can pull out a 1 half, and I'll have my du over u. And then we know the second we see that, we've got a nice ln. And again, this is an indefinite integral, no bounds, so I better get a plus c on the end of that, plus c. And lastly, because it's an indefinite integral, we'll substitute that original u back in, which was x squared plus 2x. So I've got my 1 half, the ln, absolute value, x squared plus 2x plus c. Okay, so hopefully not too bad. Um, you know, again, pick the denominator when you have a fraction. If that doesn't work, then try the numerator. All right, moving along, number four. All right, I want you to just take your time, pause it, try it on your own. I'm sure you're going to do fantastic, and then hit play and see if we followed through with the same work. So pause it, good luck. All right, um, I'll quickly run through my work if you've got it. Obviously, fast forward me here. Um, I picked my u, my du is du over three. Substituted my u and my du in, pulled out my one-third, bam, got my answer. All right, number five, a little uglier now because we're throwing in e's, of course. All right, I have the integral of e to the negative x divided by one plus e to the negative x. Now, when we talked about integrating exponentials, we said the key was always pick the exponent as your u. Well, in this case, I have two exponents. They happen to be the same, but let's, let's see what happens if I pick my u to be negative x. Okay, you can probably take the derivative, obviously, very quickly in your head. You get negative 1 dx. Look what happens. I'm going to get e to the u divided by 1 plus e to the u 
uh, and I get du over negative 1 if I divide that out. Is that useful at all? No. I have no, I still have no idea whose derivative I'm staring at. Okay, so this actually failed. That's not going to work. Right, and again, I want you to go with the method that if you see a fraction, you're typically going to pick the denominator as your u. So let's try it again. And that's part of u sub. You try it. If it doesn't work, pick something else. So let's say u equals the denominator 1 plus e to the negative x. Its derivative, uh, the 1 disappears, e to the negative x is leave it alone, and the derivative of the exponent times my dx. So I'm going to get du over negative e to the negative x. <clears throat> All right, let's substitute that in. So I get the integral of e to the negative x divided by, that was my u, and in place of dx, I'm putting du over negative e to the negative x. Now look how handy that is. All right, my e to the negative x's are going to cancel, and I'm going to pull out this negative, so I've got a negative integral du over u. Of course, I'm staring at my ln, and again, no bounds, indefinite integral, so I have to have that plus c. The ln of 1 plus e to the negative x plus c. Now, here's where the AP loves to mess with you, all right? And they're not trying to be vicious. They're just wanting you to make sure you know your properties. Could you rewrite this? All right, there were three ln properties. If you multiply, if you divide, and if you had a power or the number in front. All right, and on the AP exam, they love those properties. They can move this negative up to the exponent. So they could take that out and put it up here and say it's all of that to the negative 1. So again, you're probably not wrong. You might just have to, especially if you see an ln in your answer, probably mess around with the properties a little bit. All right, so we've messed a lot around with a lot of indefinite integrals. Of course, that has no bounds, and it gets you plus c. Now let's talk about a definite integral. All right, this means, the word definite again, means it has bounds. Okay, so there is no plus c. Uh, you should get an actual answer. So let's say we have the integral from 0 to 1 of 3x squared divided by 2x cubed plus 8 dx. All right, so let's start with our first rule. Hopefully you, you're staring and you know who you're going to pick for your u. We've done it a bunch of times already. I'm going to pick the denominator to start with. 2x cubed plus 8. I'm going to take its derivative. Uh, so that's 6x squared. That 8 disappears. dx. So I've got du over 6x squared. All right, that's going to come in handy. I see those x squareds are going to cancel. All right, so let's be very careful with our definite integral. Do not put those bounds on there. All right, I've got 3x squared divided by u. And in place of my dx, I'm putting du over 6x squared. Okay, my x squareds cancel. And I can make the 3 and 6 turn into a 1 half. All right, now, u means u bounds. All right, we got to get that through our head. If you have a u, we need u bounds. Let's go change those bounds. Take this 0, plug it in this u equation, and what do you get for your lower bound? I get 8. Take this 1, plug it in this u equation, what do we get for an upper bound? I get 10. All right, u bounds mean u equation. All right, let's see what we get here. I've got 1 half. I'm going to clean this up here, and I've got my du over u. All right, now this is great. We see du over u. We know we're staring at the ln, so I'm going to say it's 1 half. Now, some of us are really, really sloppy on our notation here. Once you integrate, do not write this integral symbol again. All right, 1 half, the ln of u, and I'm going to put on my... Vertical bar, 8 to 10. All right, you will lose all credit if you integrate this and you have an integral symbol in your answer for your again. All right, I need a 1 half ln of u, vertical bar. This is just universal notation from 8 to 10. Now, I'm not plugging my u back in because I have u bounds. Just leave it alone and plug in the upper minus lower. I'm going to leave the 1 half out front and say this is the ln of 10 minus the ln of 8. Now, I can't stress enough. Here's where the AP loves to mess with you. All right, you did nothing wrong. That's great. That's just not a choice. All right, so let's go through what the choices could be. Again, I totally agree. It's on the short answer. This is a perfect answer. But now let's talk about ln properties. 
If two ln's are broken up by a minus sign, that means I can condense them, write them as one ln, and use division. So I'm going to really say that that's the one half the ln of 10 divided by 8. Okay, that could be an answer. That's another great answer. Maybe it's not. They could also obviously reduce that. One half the ln of uh, 5 fourths. Okay, another great answer. Maybe it's not the choice. Now maybe they go back and they expand that answer. One half the ln of five minus the ln of four. All right, and again, that's another great answer. There's nothing wrong with any of them. Just don't get frustrated. You know, slow down and remember, if I see an ln, use ln properties if you don't see the answer. All right, our last big problem for the night. You'll notice that we're given f prime, and the question says find f. All right, so the key is to go from f prime to f, we clearly have to integrate. Now, we also have this initial condition, and we're going to see this almost on every AP problem we attack. All right, and we've talked about this before, so nothing new, nothing scary. We've got an initial condition. So let's just kind of go through the idea in our head. Whatever we want equals the initial condition plus the initial condition to what we want. All right, we can't screw up the order of this. All right, let's get that down there. Let's say it to ourselves again. The initial condition and the initial bound is the bottom. Want is on top. All right, so keeping that in mind, I think we can set this up pretty quickly. We want f of e is equal to the initial condition, f of the cube root of e, plus the initial value of the cube root of e, to what I want, which is e, and who do I want to find this of? Well, f prime is 5 over x. All right, so let's just slow down again. Initial condition, initial bound. Want goes on top and who we're integrating. From here, it's pretty straightforward. I should know these values. Um, I'm finding f of e. I know f of radical 3 equals 4 plus um, just have to integrate this. Hopefully, you realize you can pull out the 5 let five out. Are your bounds in the correct order? Is the cube root of e smaller than e? Well, of course, you're taking the root of it. And then I'm left with one over x. All right, so I'm going to do a lots of little legwork off to the side. I'm kind of going to leave this hanging here. Um, and I'm just going to work this off over to the side. So I've got five. I don't need u sub. I know that answer is the ln of x. All right, plug my bounds in. Lower bound cube root of e, upper bound e. All right, so I'm going to say f of e equals 4 plus, and I'll just put all this in there together, f ln of e minus, I'm sorry, 5 ln of e minus 5, uh, the ln of the cube root of e. All right, so just an upper minus lower, of course. Now, again, you might be thinking this is great. I'm done. Son of a gun, it's not an answer. Let's just talk about cleaning this up. All right, so I've got my 4 plus. I could easily pull out the 5. All right, and this is where you've got to clean it up on these multiple choice. The ln and V zap, but what do they cancel to? They don't disappear into thin air. They, of course, they cancel to a 1 minus. Um, how could you rewrite this term? Well, remember, this is really the ln of e to the 1 3rd power. Log properties bring the 1 3rd down in front. One third ln of e, and bam, I've got the zap rule again. Okay, so I'm getting four plus five. Uh, one minus one third is really, I'm going to go three thirds. Uh, oops, three thirds minus one third is two thirds. And just cleaning this up, uh, let's see, this is going to get me ten thirds, which is going to get me twelve thirds. I get a total of 22 thirds. All right, and we really just got to watch our log properties. Well, that does it for us tonight. Um, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great night.